Ah, there you are. Ma, I scheduled the appointment for your checkup. <laughs> Ma, you know you have to have a physical. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Take you to court? Have you declared incompetent? I'm not incompetent. Once, when I laughed too hard, I had a little accident. <laughs> unconscious story. No, I swear, he must have slipped me something. Apparently. People, there's no way you're ever going to get the Pope to notice you. Oh, he'll notice me. <laughs> it's okay, I'm thrilled. I hated my clothes. I need new clothes. Please. I guess I deserve it. I always say she's a cheap slut. Crossing the street without getting pregnant was a chore in Sicily. <laughs> hey, maybe this is my shot at getting into the Bible. No, I was also cleaning out my ears. I wouldn't mind glancing over at the night table and seeing his teeth next to mine. Some attack dog. He hid under the table, peed on the floor, and ran out the back. Dorothy, I never understood why your brother liked to wear women's clothes, unless he was queer. Sophia, people don't say queer anymore. They say gay. They say gay if a guy can sing the entire score of Gigi. But a six foot three, two hundred pound married man with kids who likes to dress up like Dorothy Lamore, I think you have to go with queer. <laughs> Sometimes, just to make him happy, he used to lie in bed with a baseball hat on. <laughs> Kitchen, bedroom, I knew it was a room I was good in. I fantasize about him all day. <laughs> Last night, I dreamed I was Joan of Arc and he was coming at me with a hose. <gasps> hey, we were behind the garbage cans. It's not like we were in front of everybody. <laughs> Jean is a nice person. She happens to like girls instead of guys. Some people like cats instead of dogs. Frankly, I'd rather live with a lesbian than a cat. I think there's a connection between your brain and wallpaper paste. You can't pick men and you can't pick pizza! With George, when I'd hear a noise, I'd wake him up and then he'd take out his gun and then he'd have to find the bullets because I'd always hide the bullets. And then when he found the bullets, we'd make love. Boy, can you tell a story! Let me tell you a story of the steamy south, a tale of deception and tragedy. Just a second, Uncle Remus. <laughs> oh, Blanche is telling a story. Oh, sorry, go on. I was 19. Fine. <laughs> oh, why? I thought she was finished. She just said she was 19. Well, look at her now. You don't call that a tragedy? <laughs> Fasten your seatbelt, slut puppy. Did he put out the fire? <laughs> Three times. Yeah, we did each other's hair and laughed and laughed. I can see why. <laughs> Should these be lower? <gasps> All right, this is it. Now, don't forget, you've got something he wants. Yeah. What? I'm all set. What's with Satan's secretary? <laughs> Forgive me, Rose, but I haven't had sex in 15 years and it's starting to get on my nerves. Oh, boy, we're going to a sperm bank. <laughs> Never say that while I'm eating. I sat through it twice. You'll love it. He sweats like a pig and he doesn't put his shirt on. <laughs> Can't think of a better way to pep up a slow day. <laughs> I don't believe in hitting children. Personally, I like to lay into a kid with a melon ball. It's got a nice weight, good balance in the hand, and it's portable. You wouldn't let me get the melon ball, so I improvised. Is that all you Italians know how to do, scream and hit? No, we also know how to make love and sing opera. And by the way, you have nothing to be guilty about. What? Well, I don't feel guilty. Oh, Dorothy, good God, you were cleaning out the garage and you asked Sophia to move a sofa? Don't start with me. I mean, she is 84 years old and you're asking her to do the work of two men? It was wicker, all right. And the lazy boy? Blanche, leave her alone. I'm sure she feels bad enough. Thank you, Rose. Oh, honey, do we have any orange juice? Sure. Would you like me to pour you a glass or have Sophia come in and bring you the refrigerator? <laughs> Enough. Pussycat, I moved that safe to the attic like you asked me to. <laughs> Get out of here.
can I have food now? How many challenges do I have left in life? I managed to live 80, 81 years. I survived pneumonia, two operations, a stroke. One night I'll belch. Seeing if I can get more than halfway across the street before the don't walk sign comes on. Arthritis is bothering me. My social security check was late. And I realized today I haven't showered with a man in 22 years. Trying to stay awake on the john? Now if you'll excuse me, I'll be in the living room being feeble. Hoping it is the john? <laughs> Save whatever pieces you find, Sophia. I can glue it back together. You bet. Whatever I find, I love that vase. <laughs> You know your friends better than I do. If you think they're the kind of people who can handle it, I'd prefer to tell them. Here we are, ice cream clowns with sugar cone for everybody. Fine, I'm just trying to make Rose go away. What? Beat it, Rose, I'm busy. What am I doing? It's Tuesday night, I'm cleaning out my purse. Thank God, I hated that thing. Can you drive me to the mall Friday night? They're giving free blood pressure tests and some of the girls and I have a high-low bet. What is it gonna take? She has to admit that she's a little witch without much sense when it comes to family matters. Who takes pleasure in making other people miserable? That wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> Ma, she really likes you. <laughs> I think this whole thing can be fixed. Sure, as soon as she comes to me on her knees and begs my forgiveness. I think she'd like that. <laughs> All right. The little witch is ready to apologize for... It's too tight, it's too short, and it shows too much cleavage for a woman your age. Sophia, honey, where have you been? I thought you were taking a nap. I went to the video store. Ma, I told you I'd go. Forget it. The last time you brought back seven brides for seven brothers. You know how disappointed I was to find out it's a musical? Hi, Ma. What you watching? I don't know, one of those Steven Spielberg movies. <laughs> That's not a Steven Spielberg movie. What are they doing? You know what they're doing. We had that talk when you were 12. No, I can't believe this. You rented a dirty movie? Dirty is in the eye of the beholder. Okay, maybe that's a little dirty. But at least what we all did was natural. Well, not all the time. Ma, I do not snore. Please, I had to turn you from the window so you wouldn't inhale the drapes. I made the beds, I washed the dishes, scoured the pots, cleaned the bathroom, folded the laundry, took out the garbage. My, my did you attend a military school? <laughs> no, she lived with me. <laughs> Just play the music, Rose. City Christmas, 1955. Picture it, Brooklyn, 1957. Picture it, the Papal Mass, a few hours ago. Picture it, Germany, 1922. Germany? Were you on vacation, Sophia? Spy. That was a summer job. Have a seat, boss. Look, I've read and reread your list of demands. Break the Kraken. Before you begin, I want to tell you something. I'm no novice when it comes to major negotiations. Oh, really? Let me tell you a story. Picture it. Sicily, 1922. <laughs> An attractive peasant girl who has saved her lira embarks on a glorious vacation to a Crimean resort on the Black Sea. For weeks, she frolics at this seaside resort and enjoys the company of many young men, all of whom adore her. All of them? Shut up, and I work alone. 
<laughs> All of them. When it's time to return to Sicily, three different suitors beg her to stay. But she can't decide who to choose, so she chooses none of them. But she agrees to meet with them at the same resort many years later. To her trio of suitors, that eventful gathering was referred to as rendezvous with Sophia. But to the rest of the world, it was better known as the Yalta Conference. <laughs> Picture this. Two young girls, best friends, who shared three things. A pizza recipe, some dough, and a dream. Everything is going great until one day, a fast-talking pepperoni salesman gallops into town. Of course, both girls are impressed. He dates one one night, the other the next night. Pretty soon, he drives a wedge between them. Before you know it, the pizza suffers, the business suffers, the friendship suffers. The girls part company and head for America, never to see one another again. Rose, one of those girls was me. The other one you probably know is Mama Celeste. <laughs> Italy, 1912. A beautiful young peasant girl with clear olive skin meets an exciting but penniless Spanish artist. There's an instant attraction. They laugh, they sing, they slam down a few boilermakers. <laughs> Shortly afterwards, he's arrested for showing her how he can hold his palate without using his hands. digress. He paints her portrait and they make passionate love. She spends much of the next day in the shower with a loofah sponge, scrubbing his fingerprints off her body. <laughs> she sees the portrait and is insulted. It looks nothing like her and she storms out of his life forever. That peasant girl was me. And that painter was Pablo Picasso. <laughs> Picture it. Sicily, 1920. Seraphine and I were both crazy about Marco, the goat boy. In appearance, an Adonis. In behavior, horny as a toad. Little did I know he had a thing for hairy fat girls. If I were fatter and hairier, Dorothy, Marco, the goat boy, could have been your father. I think we all grieve. Picture it, Sicily, 1852. Ma, I am in no mood, and besides, you weren't alive in 1852. What? We can't learn from history? It was mid-century, and a disillusioned Italy looked to the House of Savoy for leadership. Giuseppe Garibaldi, our courageous leader, and not a bad dresser, thought, let's regain some national pride and jump into this... Crimean War thing. <laughs> of course, there was a big kickoff party at Giuseppe's beach house, and everyone came. Coincidentally, this was also the night his wife Rosa hid her sexual peak. <laughs> Ma, I am in here because of guilt. This is not a story about guilt. This is a story about being a bad hostess. <laughs> While Rosa had Giuseppe in the bedroom with his saber around his ankles, 200 hungry guests were strip-searching mice for a piece of cheese. Ma, so what's your point? That Rosa and I throw bad parties? That's my minor point. My major point is that, like Rosa, you're screwing around in the bedroom when there are important things to do outside. <laughs> Sophia? Oh, hi. Come on in. Sit down. We're sorry to barge in like this. We were wondering if Mr. Fixit was here. Chuck is here. Oh, darn. <laughs> you think we could change into Mr. Fixit? Uh, it's a mental illness, Rose, not a masquerade party. In Sicily, we had a guy with a multiple personality, only they didn't get along. And one personality put out a contract on the other. <laughs> You should have seen it. He had a shootout with himself in the piazza. He winged a priest, a waiter, and shot down the Cinzano sign. Fortunately, he was able to beat himself senseless before anyone else got hurt. 
In my village in Sicily, we had a custom. If your mother-in-law died, you were forced to wear a hair shirt, eat dirt, and pound your head on a rock. <laughs> Anything to keep you from laughing. <laughs> In Sicily, we never went to the doctor. We went to the widow Caravelli. Whatever you had, she had a cure. She was best known for this green salve she used to make to treat ear infections. One day, she gave a batch to Salvador, the village idiot. He misunderstood the directions and put it on his linguini instead of in his ear. I guess if you're an idiot with a hearing problem, you do things like that. As it turns out, it wasn't such a bad thing to do. The stuff tasted great, and Salvador decided to market it. At first, it didn't move so well. Linguini with ear salve on a menu doesn't look too appetizing. But once he changed the name to pesto sauce, it moved like hotcakes. Ma, yeah. you're making this up. So what? I'm old. I'm supposed to be colorful. Did Stan ever get you, Minko? Stan wouldn't get a popcorn at the movies. You know, I always wanted Mink. I thought it would make me look elegant and impressive. We didn't have Mink in Sicily. You want to impress someone? You shot their brother. My queen's knight attacks her king. Banzai! Ma, how did two Sicilian peasant girls ever become interested in chess? Chess is like war, only cheaper. It's a perfect game for Sicily, a country very warlike and dead-ass broke. We'll be in Miami Thursday. Hope to see you. Respectfully yours, Augustine Bagatelli. Who is Augustine Bagatelli? Nobody, just a boy I knew from my village in Sicily that I was engaged to once. What? Well, what do you know? Sophia has a past. That's right, but unlike yours, I didn't need penicillin to get through it. <laughs> Ma, you never told me you were engaged. What happened? The war happened. Augustine went off to fight, and I never heard from him again until today. I wonder why he looked you up after all this time. Are you kidding? He was crazy about me. I was the only girl in the village who didn't want to be a nun. Hey, hey, hey.